Welcome back to Module 3. In this video, we're going to be talking about one last section of Chapter 5 in OpenStax Astronomy that students often struggle with, and so we're going to kind of highlight it on its own in this separate video. So we're going to be talking about the Doppler effect, sometimes called the Doppler shift, and we're going to start with a discussion of um, our everyday uh, ability to observe this effect on Earth. So we'll start by talking about sound, although that won't be what we use it for in astronomy, because it's a little bit easier to think about and potentially listen for the next time that you're out and about and there's a fire truck or ambulance nearby. So the Doppler effect is the apparent shift in the frequency and wavelength of a particular wave, because either the source of the sound or the observer is moving relative to that other person. Maybe they're moving to, towards each other or away from each other, or a car is just driving by us and it's coming towards us and then away from us. But we can hear the difference in the sound due to the Doppler effect. So in this little diagram, when the car first shows up, it idles for a second and it's not moving relative to an observer on the left side or the right side of the screen. When the car's not moving, that particular sound will have one single wavelength, and everyone will agree on what that wavelength look like, looks like. But once the car starts to move left across the screen, an observer standing on the left is going to receive sound where all of the peaks of the waves are scrunched together. That means it's a shorter wavelength sound, and that's a higher frequency or higher pitch sound. If instead someone were standing on the right side of the screen as the car drives away from them, they're going to receive sound that has much wider spread peaks, so that's a longer wavelength and a lower frequency or a lower pitch sound. Now we're not talking at all about the volume. Certainly something will be loud if it's nearby, but that has nothing to do with the Doppler effect. We're talking about the specific changes to wavelength and frequency compared to the actual sound being produced and how it is observed. So at this point, we have to set aside sound as our kind of focus and turn instead to light. But before we do that, let's think about other situations, either using sound or light, both could be the Doppler effect, that we may recognize um, uses Doppler effect um, to track things, motion towards and away. So take a moment to think about any situations that you know that um, a speed is being tracked or motion is being tracked for something and see if you can come up with some examples. So it would be great if you were able to come up with one. It's fine if you, um, if you didn't. You may have heard on the Weather Channel or um, a weather person saying something about Doppler radar. So we can track the motion of clouds and storm systems using the Doppler effect. We send out radio waves and we get them bounced back off the clouds and we get to see if the clouds are moving towards us or away from us. Um, police cars and um, speed cameras use the Doppler effect as well. They send out a signal, they see what comes back to them and how it has changed because the object is moving towards them or away from them. And even in medical fields, medical ultrasonography is using the Doppler effect as well. We can track the motion of, um, of blood streams using the Doppler effect. So it's got a wide range of uh, uses, um, both for sound waves and for light waves. The police radar and the Doppler radar um, for cloud systems are both using light, using radio waves specifically, and ultrasonography is using um, sound waves, ultrasound, so not what our ears can hear, but still that um, pressure wave to be able to track changes because of motion. All right, now in astronomy, we have to set aside sound as a possibility. We don't get any sound from space. So instead, the Doppler effect or Doppler shift in astronomy is when a star is moving relative to the Earth towards us or away from us, or a galaxy is moving uh, relative to the Earth towards us or away from us, the light that we receive shifts a little bit, and it's specifically the spectral lines, the ones that we introduced in the previous video. Spectral line patterns shift in a way that isn't quite lined up with what we expected them to be. The spectral fingerprint is almost smudged in a particular way. 
so that we can tell what elements are there, but we can also tell that there is motion towards us or away from us. So the speed of the object, the relative speed between the observer, our telescopes, and this distant astronomical object, a fast speed will create a big change, a small speed um, will correct, uh, create a small uh, change, and then the direction toward or away determines how that change occurs. In the same way that the person listening to the car horn would hear a high pitch or a low pitch depending on where they're standing, the direction of motion is going to shift things to longer wavelengths red if we're moving away from that object, or shorter wavelengths blue if we're uh, moving towards that object. So blue shifted means toward, and red shift means away. And we're going to be practicing that over a couple of different exercises together. These are small shifts overall. If we were to think about the whole black body curve that we talked about in the previous video, we don't really see the whole pattern, the whole shape of the curve change enough to notice. It is small differences in where those lines show up relative to where we expect them to be from a lab um, result that really tells us that there is Doppler shift going on. So for example, this image here, the lab spectrum is where we expect the different absorption lines to be based on if there was no motion. And then when that whole pattern starts to shift to the right, and it shifts a little bit and it's not, um, it's not exact, uh, each of these shifts happen a little bit differently, then um, when we see those shifted wavelengths, we can tell that that object is moving. And if everything is shifted over to the right, then it's a spectrum that is moving away from us. The shifts are so small that we are not seeing a change in the color itself, so red shift doesn't mean anything looks redder, blue shift doesn't mean the star looks bluer. So important for us to keep in mind. All right, so when we are using this process to figure out that there is a shift, we always have to have a comparison. If I simply give you um, a set of lines in this class, you don't have enough information from me to know if that object is moving towards us or moving away from us, or if it's moving fast or slow. You need to either compare two stars to know which one is moving um, more towards us or more away from us, or you have to compare to a known result, a lab spectrum, like at the top of this set of options on the slide, or a known wavelength, which we'll see in a slide or two, or a star that we state specifically we know is at rest. So, um, before we continue, I want you to kind of make sure that you have in your notebook that red shifted means motion away from us, blue shifted means that motion is towards us, and big shifts means that we're going very fast, and small shifts means we're going very slow. Those are the only facts that we really need in order to apply our understanding of the Doppler effect, so let's see how we do. So three questions to start with. Pause the video so that you can um, really take your time and answer one or more stars for each of these questions that fits the, the question asked. All right, so for our first question, which stars are moving away from us? Away means red shifted, so we have to look at patterns that seem to be shifted to the right side because that's where red is labeled. So uh, star two is shifted a little bit to the right, that's moving away from us, and star four is shifted a whole bunch to the right, so much so that we've actually lost a couple of the spectral lines. They're now in infrared instead of visible light red frequencies. So stars two and four are moving away from us. For question two, which star is moving the slowest? To answer that question, we have to figure out which pattern is closest to the lab spectrum, totally separate from whether it has shifted to the left or to the right, which one is closest, the smallest total shift. And the easiest way to do that is if we choose one specific spectral line and we kind of see how far apart um, from the lab spectrum that line shows up in each of these patterns. And we see that although stars one and two both have relatively small shifts, Star two seems to have the smallest change, and so it is moving the slowest. 
So question two, the answer is star two. And then question three, can we tell the color of any of these stars? I hope that we decided that the answer is no. We don't get to have red stars because there are more lines in red or less lines in red. We don't get to have blue stars because they are blue shifted. The only thing that determines color is the temperature of stars. And we don't have the temperature information here. We would need to know the peak wavelength or we need to be able to see the curves of these stars. Okay, so those were a couple of questions to get us started. We've got more. So this is a different set of information. Uh, because this is also how astronomers might be analyzing data. They might be looking for a particular hydrogen line that they know from the lab should be at 410 nanometers. Based on experiments in the laboratory, chemists have told us that this particular hydrogen line should be at 410 nanometers. So pause the video for as long as you need. Looking at the table of data provided on the right side of the slide, answer all four of these questions to the best of your ability. Give yourself lots of time to try these on your own and then unpause when you're ready. Okay, so for stars moving towards us, we don't have blue and red that we can look at as colors to shift towards in a way. We need to now understand that moving towards us, we know is blue shifted but then we add that layer of understanding that blue shifting means we are shifting to shorter wavelengths. So we're looking for stars where the observed wavelength is shorter, smaller number, than what it's supposed to be. Star A is smaller by three nanometers, and star C is also smaller than 410 nanometers. It's at 402 nanometers instead. So for question one, A and C are the correct answers here. All right, for question two, when we want to figure out which star is moving fastest. So we're, um, we do have to assume that we're talking about fastest towards and away. Uh, there's just not enough text on the slides to say that. So for which star is moving fastest um, towards or away from us, just speed uh, in, that, in that one dimension. What we are looking for is which of these numbers is the biggest difference, the biggest change from the 410 nanometers. So if you didn't already, you might want to make a small note to yourself that star A is different by 3, star B is different by 11 nanometers, star C is different by 8 nanometers, and star D is different by 5 nanometers. Out of that set of number changes, star B would be the biggest change. So for question 2, the answer would be star B, because it is the most different from what we expected it to be. For question three, another chance for us to make sure that we confront this misconception. We cannot tell which of these stars is blue in color. Blue shifting does not mean that a star looks blue, so we cannot tell which stars are blue in color for star three, or question three. And then for question four, can we tell which star is farthest from us? A lot of the time, Students kind of get stuck on this idea that if a star is moving farther away, that means it is farther. And we need to kind of stop and confront that right away. So I'd like for us to imagine or make a small sketch in the margins of our notes that we are standing in the grass in the middle of a divided highway. Cars can speed by um, forward on our right side and cars can speed by um, towards us on our left side. As we stand in the grass on this divided highway and cars are going in both directions, we want to recognize that stars can be nearby and be moving away from us or nearby and moving towards us. They can also be very far away and moving away from us or very far away and moving towards us. Distance is a completely separate piece of information from the direction of motion. So I do not want us to think of something getting closer as being close. And I actually want us to try to shy away from the phrases getting closer and getting farther because that in starts to imply distance wording. Just use toward and away. That helps us keep a little bit more um, of a distinction between distance words and direction words. 
If you struggled with that question four, um, then I really encourage you to make a clear note to yourself in your notebook, circle it, uh, highlight it, whatever you need to, that the Doppler effect for individual stars does not tell us distance. All right, so uh, as we wrap up this topic, it's a relatively small topic, but it's standalone and it's really, really necessary for our understanding in lots of different parts of the remaining semester. We can really narrow down our whole discussion of the Doppler effect into a small bulleted list, a lot of which I hopefully you already have in your notes. In order for us to notice a shift, we have to have something to compare to. So we can't just have a standalone piece of information if we don't know what it should look like. We don't know if it has shifted to longer wavelengths or shorter wavelengths, higher frequencies or lower frequencies. Motion towards us causes a shift to shorter wavelengths. I've color-coded that slightly blue because that is blue shifted. Motion away from us causes a shift to longer wavelengths. I've co um, colored that pinkish red because that is a red shift. And then as a separate pair of facts, if we are going fast, we see a big change. And if we are going slow, we see a small change. If we've got those five facts in our brains, then we have our understanding of the Doppler effect. You may want to add the kind of misconceptions that there's no change to the overall color of the object. This information is not giving us distances to individual stars. Um, but those five facts are the key takeaways for this topic. When we see each other in the next video, we're going to be covering um, all of our uh, overview of telescopes. You'll then get to explore telescopes on your own in an upcoming project, um, but this will be the end of our coverage of Chapter 5. So I will see you in the next video for Chapter 6 in OpenStax Astronomy. See you then.